John Bodine, winner of two Nobel Prizes in Physics, said, The combined results of several people working together is often much more effective than could be that of an individual scientist working alone. Now, you may not be a scientist, but you might be a developer and you may want to collaborate between a teammate on one bit of code. This is where Bitbucket comes in. I'm going to be talking today about what is Bitbucket, when I should use Bitbucket, and how do I use it. So the main use case that you may want to use a version management system or a storage solution is when you have a file that you want to store in a central location, preferably indexed and version controlled. Bitbucket is the remote place where you can store your files. When should I use Bitbucket? Now there's a lot of solutions you could use to store files on the internet. You could use Dropbox, you could use Google Docs, but the main use case that people use Bitbucket for is if you have a lot of people all working on the same code base at the same time. You might want to go back through different versions. You might want to all work on the same file at the same time and merge them all together. You might need to work offline for an extended period of time. All of these kind of use cases you can do with Bitbucket. Bitbucket uses a repository management system called Git. The main idea behind Git is that it is a distributed repository. There is a version stored on the server and each user also has their copy of the entire repository. Each user independently and isolate <clears throat> in isolation changes their code, makes sure it works and then merges it back into the master. You can see here from this diagram that we've got the master branch, which is the main stable branch that maybe many developers are working on at the same time. And the green branch, where a developer takes the code, a file or an image, at a particular time, changes it, and then merges that back in after one or many changes have happened to the stable branch. This is the power of Git, where you can work in isolation and are sure that nobody else is modifying their code, which is having an effect on yours. So now we're going to go on to how do you use Bitbucket. In this section, we're going to cover signing up to Bitbucket, changing a file, and then creating a branch. To do this, we're first going to have to sign up to Bitbucket. So I'm going to use a temporary email address for this. So I'll copy that and We'll go to the website bitbucket.org. See that big blue button stating that you can get started for free. So for personal use and for a certain amount of repositories, it is free to use, completely free to use. So I'll enter my temporary email address I would suggest that you use your own email address for this. And then I'll put my full name and a password. So I'll think of a password that we're going to use up use later on in, in the segment. Confirm that I'm not a robot. And press agree and sign up. So they want to verify that 
you are who you are. So if you go to the temp mail or you go to wherever your email, you verify your address, click that, and if all goes well, we're in. Before we're finished, we need to create a user, a unique username across the whole of Bitbucket Cloud. So I'm going to choose the username Peter Granger. You can use any name you want. You can make up a fun name if you want. And then if that's unique, that'll all pass. So there's a Q&A, which is optional. You can complete it if you want, but we'll skip it for this tutorial now. So the first thing we're going to do is create a repository. A repository is a collection of files versioned and organized into different branches. So we're going to name this repository ASPE Workshop Training. The next option asks you if you want to make this a private repository or you want to make this a public repository. If you make this a private one, then the it is not uh, viewable by any other person apart from you. And you can't check the code out um, unless you have a password. And nobody else can access it unless you add them as a collaborator. So we're going to make this a public one so anyone can view it. So you can view this after the workshop if you'd like. And then there's a question to ask if you want to include a README. So it's very it's quite useful to have the README with a tutorial if this is your first time. We'll leave that on so we can see what that looks like. And then you've got a version control system that you want to use. Uh, most people use Git. Uh, it's a little easier to use um, than Mercurial. And there's a lot more uh, documentation online about it. So we'll go and create that repo. So we've got the repo there. At the top here, it tells you how you get that repository locally on your own PC. So what I'll do is I'll copy this command here. We'll go on over to the command line. We'll clear what we had before. And we'll just paste that in straight up, straight in there. And we'll just go to a, a, a directory and we'll just paste that in and that will copy that code, that uh, readme file over locally. So that'll create a folder. So if we do ls sp workshop training, you can see that that has one file in readme.md. Now we can navigate into that file folder and then open that file with your favorite text editor. I'm using VS Code, but you can use whatever you'd like. So you can see there we've got a folder with one file in it, readme.md. We'll change that file a little bit. So changed ASPE. And there you have it, you've changed the file. So now what we have to do is add it to our local repository and then push that up to our remote repository. So first we have to add it to our local one. If you do a git status, that'll show you that we have a modified readme file and it is being added. It's been added to our, to be able to be committed. Next we have to commit it. So committing, adds a human readable way of summarizing what you have done in this particular modification. So we're going to say git commit changed header as an example. So when somebody reads this commit, they know that the only reason that we changed this, this header was because we wanted to have it as an example. 
So there we go. So we've added that commit. So we do git status now. You can see that now we are behind the version on the server by one commit. So we've committed one thing, but the server doesn't know about this commit. So now we're going to tell the server about this commit. So we do a git push. And now it'll ask for our password. Now this is the password that we set up before. And then that's it. Then we've set that up. We've, we've put that on the server. Now to prove that it's on there, we'll go back to the website, reload that page. And there we go. There's the readme there. And then we've got changed ASP. So we've validated that that has been changed. Now, next, what we're going to do is a use case that you probably use a lot is where you create a branch and do a change and then merge that and then um, commit that branch onto the server and then merge that into the master. So first we will clear that away, what we did before. And we're going to create a branch. The minus B flag will create the branch if, it, if it's not there. So we're going to call that dev. So we've switched a new branch called dev. We're going to push that branch up. So now the server Bitbucket knows about that branch. Because we haven't got anything on the server, you first have to tell it which server that you want to send it to. So in our case, it's called origin. Origin is the default location of the server. So if you push that up there. Uh, to view to view what origin is, you can use the command git remote minus v, and that will give you which remotes you have and what the location of them is. And uh, that's that's automatically set up when you do a git clone. So now, if you do a git status, we've got we're on our branch dev. So. Now what we can do, we can change this de branch dev independently of the master, check that in, and then merge that with the master. So first we will change that again. So code readme.md. So that'll open the readme file. We'll say on dev branch. And again, um, we can add that file and commit the file. So this time the commit is going to be um, testing out branches. And then we're going to push that to the server. There you go. Because we've already added the password, it will remember it for a certain amount of time, and then it'll ask for it again. So what it's saying there is, do you want to pull, create a pull request for this dev branch? Um, so if you follow that through, if you go to that link, it'll automatically create a pull request. So what a pull request does is it compares what you've done on the current branch or the dev branch, and then it will merge that to master. So you can add reviewers or you can just merge that yourself. So, and you can say that you want to close that particular branch. Now it's good practice to close a branch every time you merge. So we'll create that pull request. And this, what this will do is this will um, compare your development branch with your master branch and tell you what's different. So we've got here that the difference between the master branch and the dev branch is we've added these few words here. Now, um, in a real scenario, you would have someone else review this probably. Uh, before you wanted to merge it, just to double check that you've got everything right. But we're just going to merge it straight in. Um, and you can you can um, have a different commit message to say why, um, if, if you want to have something different in the merge message. And that's it. And then you that's merged that change into the master branch. And now the master branch will resemble the dev branch, and there will no longer be 
a dev branch. So it's like the diagram we had before, right at the start, we've taken off a branch of dev, merged that back into master. So now if we go back to the source code, there's only one branch, the master branch, because we merged that back in and change ASP on dev branch. So what have we gone through? We've gone through setting up an account on Bitbucket. We've created a repository. We've cloned that repository locally. We've made a change on the master branch. We've taken a development branch from the master branch. We've pushed that, master, that development branch to the server. And then finally, we've merged the development branch into the master branch.